these big wind events in Alaska are not new. Um, this is a newspaper from 1979 that somebody posted uh, in uh, one of the Alaska Facebook groups uh, showing some of the same kinds of things that happened here this year and have happened in in uh, previous years. So uh, kind of kind of interesting. This has been going on for some time. And, in, in, you know, we always wonder down here in the lower 48 about people keeping their airplanes outside in Alaska. You know, we're down here. We're fortunate. A lot of us are fortunate to be able to keep things in hangars. But I know hangar space is uh, at a premium up there. Just some pictures that uh, folks sent me or I got uh, from the uh, uh, Facebook page uh, that people had posted. Uh, you can just really see what some of this wind is up to. And we've got some video here in a minute that uh, is even a little more exciting. And uh, as things started getting away, they started getting upside down in some cases as well, too. I'm going to run this one twice for those of you who haven't seen it. This airplane's actually lifting off the ground. This is just some more of the aftermath. The tail is play is gonna fly. I don't remember the names of all the people that sent me videos, uh, but I sure do appreciate it. I'd love to I'd love to name y'all off, but I got a bunch of them and I, and I, I don't uh, don't remember all the names. Steve's whole video is about an hour and a half long. There's some really great information. I'm not showing it in its entirety, so if you want to see the whole video, it's on supercub.org YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link in my YouTube channel. Steve from supercub.org does a new video every month or so, and I stumbled on this one because I was looking for information on the most recent windstorm in Palmer because it affects uh, Airframes Alaska and some other people I know. There's a saying in Alaska that any near-death experience that you survive is just a great story. And last night, Alaska proved that to us again. 100 mile an hour winds here in Palmer took out the wall of our main Palmer facility, as well as part of the roof during the night. And so I ended up kind of going down this rabbit hole because I heard my name come up in this particular video. And then I got to thinking about my own accident and things, and I thought it would be a good time to share some of those lessons. Uh, who's the guy that has a really nice mall uh, that, that wrecked out there by Iliamna? Uh, does all the long prop uh, videos. Greg Miller. Oh, uh, Greg, Greg Miller. Greg, Greg uh, you know, was out playing one afternoon. Uh, just got a little ish, issue, a little bit of gear, a little wingtip issue. And uh, uh, the guy that came to get him uh, didn't have any. Greg didn't. And the other guy didn't have a lot of tie down gear. They had to leave the plane that night, and the next morning it had blown away and just turned into one big wreck. As we flew over my airplane, I could see it was upside down, and all I could think about was a bunch of money going up in smoke. I had no insurance on Bushwhacker, and I knew it was going to cost me probably fifty or $60,000 to rebuild it back to the way she was. We tied the airplane down um, as quick as we could. We actually, I turned it around and had John hold the wing down as I turned it. And so we're facing away from the wind, try to kill the lift on the wing. And then we drove duckbill anchors in on all three points. So we've got it tied down. Um, and uh, we're counting on these babies holding. So, uh, pretty exposed spot, but you know, this kind of hunt, you're going to be exposed sometimes, so it's just what it is. So a lot of people probably wonder 
how to secure an airplane out in this kind of environment. And I carry these duckbill anchors. They go into the ground 18 inches and then you're basically, you know, giving them away. You're not going to take them back out of the ground. So once uh, you drive them in, they are a lost leader. And then I use a really good quality climbing rope to tie off with. And so I sacrifice three here. Um, we plan on being here for at least, you know, up to a week. So sacrificing three is no big deal. One driven in back here at the tail. And tied off to the tail wheel. And then I secured my control with rope so it couldn't be banging around, which it would have been. And then I just use a cheap little thing I made for gust lock on the tail, just out of some eighth inch Luan plywood. And so even though we're pretty exposed here, I feel like the airplane's relatively safe. It would take a lot. We put another duckbill anchor in on this side because the wind was blowing so hard out of the south. We were worried if the airplane got loose, it would end up on top of us, possibly over there. So I didn't want that to happen. So we've had wind the whole time we've been here, but right now, it's kind of sustained winds of maybe 25 and gusts to about 40. So Greg, I think I think the latrine should be moved a little further away from the tent. Just just a tad bit. I know that you like to do that close to camp, but if you wouldn't mind. This is where I put my squatty potty. <laughs> this last accident was the last accident I've had. It was in 2014. It was in my airplane Bushwhacker and I had just finished a moose hunting trip and was heading out to Iliamna to spend some time fishing and recreating. The day it happened, it was blowing pretty good. It was blowing 40 to 50 miles an hour at a thousand feet. The terrain was rolling hills and I thought that because it was so wide open, that I could probably land anyway and not have an issue. Here's my own narrative of what happened. As I was making my way in on my approach to this strip that was in wide open area, I was basically milking my way down out of this turbulent air. And as I got closer to the ground, my touchdown point kept getting revised. I kept leaving part of the strip behind me, but I was only progressing at about probably 10 or 15 miles an hour over the ground. So I had plenty of time to look at where I was landing. As I was about 15 feet above the ground, all of a sudden I had a gust of wind get underneath my wing and completely upset me. It basically put me in a knife edge type situation. And at that point, I went to full power and tried to fly out of it. Unbeknownst to me at the time, my right wing had made contact with the ground and at full power, I was just flying on the edge of that wing but the wind was underneath me and it was pushing me in a turn to the right. As I was going to the right, I realized that I was getting pulled further and further nose down because of the resistance on that right wing. And I decided that there was no point in hitting the ground hard at full power. I might as well just chop the power and accept the results. And at that point, that's what I did is I chopped the power. Immediately I came down off that right wing and I came down on the left gear leg and broke that axle off. And at the time it broke the axle and I pretty much came to a stop almost instantly. The wheel was less than 15 feet away from the airplane and um, I went kind of up on my nose and got the prop and then that was pretty much it. I got out of the airplane and the wind was just awful. It, was, it would be gusting one minute 35, 40 miles an hour, and almost completely calm the next. And at that point, I had to decide what I was going to do with the airplane. 
I had a friend not far behind who was coming to land at the same spot. As he got closer, I kind of gave him a play-by-play view of what was happening on the ground with the wind so that he could kind of time his landing. He got landed, and then we decided what we were going to do with the airplane. Unfortunately, we both had pulled all of our tie-down gear out of our airplane in order to haul gear out to this particular spot. So now I had an airplane on the ground in very, very windy conditions with no real tie-down stuff. He happened to have bags that you could stick rocks in. And so we thought that with 500 to 1,000 pounds of rocks tied in a wing bag that it would hold the airplane down. We also found a piece of rebar that we drove into the ground. And I had about 100 feet of rope. So we tied down the wing that was in the wind mostly and thought that it would be secure until morning. I went back to his lodge and started making phone calls for the pieces I was going to need to put my airplane back together. At that point, the airplane was in pretty good shape. One broken gear leg, one bent oleo, one bent aileron. But other than that, the airplane was flyable with another prop. It was going to have to sit there for a couple days, but we were going to go out the next morning, make sure that it was secure. Well, best laid plans don't always go as planned. During the night, the wind came up much stronger. According to his guide, who was guiding a bear hunter out there, the wind was blowing somewhere between 70 and 90 during the night. And it picked up my airplane and took it about 100 yards and slammed it down upside down. And at that point, it wasn't going to fly out again, not without a lot of work. So I made a decision to part it out in the field. And I spent the next two days out there by myself taking the airplane apart. And then we spent a day hauling all the parts back in. Anyway, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. I always try to learn something from my mistakes. And so I've thought about this accident probably more than I've thought about any of the other accidents or incidents I've had. Mainly because I'm not sure I would have done anything much differently. And I guess with that, you're going to have to accept the consequences. The only thing that I will say is you won't catch me without duckbill anchors in my airplane as a means of tie down. So having duckbill anchors and a bunch of rope would have saved me a bunch of heartache. I didn't have any insurance on this airplane, and so it was all out of pocket. If you had asked me if I would wreck my airplane at this particular spot, I would have told you never. But after having wrecked my airplane at this particular spot, I can tell you that things happen that you would never expect flying an airplane. So expect the unexpected. And when you get all done bringing your parts back in a bucket, Then you get to talk to the state trooper about what happened.